Hi folks and welcome back. Today I'll be walking you through how to use my procedural skin model that I've just released on Gumroad. Download link will be in the description box below. The model comes with a bunch of parametric controls that allow for artistic freedom over the shapes and thicknesses of different skin layers, the addition and appearance of other things such as hair, sweat glands, blood vessels, and so on. There's a whole bunch of them though, so let's get straight into it. So just some housekeeping first. The asset file comes with the procedural skin model, as well as hair, sweat gland, and fat cells, all held in a dedicated collection called distribute objects. These separate geometries have their own geometry node settings to allow for more customized looks for each of these elements. We'll come onto each of these very shortly. Onto the main controls for the skin model. The majority of important ones are accessible through the modify tab in the geometry node. I've done my best to organize them into sections depending on what they control. So the base model parameters at the top, then the hair, fat cells, sweat glands, and veins and arteries. Note that the separator labels that demarcate them are just string input fields, but do be careful because they can just be edited like so. Let's start with the base model parameters up here. X and Y basically just control the X and Y or the lateral extent of the model. The resolution count here sets the in-plane subdivision that gives enough geometry to each of the layers to allow for all of this topology. This is the main setting that can quickly add geometry to the model, so do use with caution. If your computer struggles with RAM, I'd keep this to something low, anywhere between 3 to 5. Layer spacing allows you to add spaces between each of the layers if you ever wanted to create an exploded view. Below that, you have the thicknesses of each of the layers of the model. By default, I currently have six layers constituting this model, and so you can control the thickness of each independently. So beyond that, there are several additional layer-specific parameters that aren't exposed in the Modify tab. And so these parameters are basically the material applied to each of these layers, and then some parameters that control all of the interfacial topology. In order to control these, you need to come to the Geometry Nodes Modify itself, which I have open as a window beneath the model, you want to come to the blue box titled Layer Specific Parameters. Here you'll find a bunch of nodes that create each individual layer. The first node here, called Top Skin Surface, is used to create the initial top layer of skin, and only the top layer, not the actual layer with the thickness. For that, there are six further layers, each called Build Layer, which adds thickness and also defines things like the material applied to these six layers. Just briefly looking at the Top Skin Surface, the things that you have control over are the scale, the strength, and the roughness of the topology. And then of course, material is just the material applied, so self-explanatory. Let's then look at the build layer node. So again, the material self-explanatory. I should mention that all of these materials are currently optimized for cycles, not for EV. Next, you have the fill top option. By default, this is disabled, but essentially without this enabled and I increase the layer spacing, you see that all of the layers, individual layers, don't have a top surface. And the reason for that is just simply, again, to avoid unnecessary duplicating of faces when the layers are touching each other. But obviously, should you ever want to create exploded views like this, you'll want to enable fill top for all of these different layers so that you actually have solid layers of material. The next option here is this checkbox, independent face control. So let's take the uppermost layer just as an example. And so with independent face control disabled, and if I look from the side, might be easier to see if I increase the thickness, you'll see both the top and the bottom surface undulate the same way. Basically the surface topology of top and bottom faces track together. Whereas if I enable independent face control, now they do not track. And so I can apply whatever interfacial topology to the bottom independent of the top. And so if I open up the independent face control options beneath this tick box, you'll get the controls to control this bottom interface. So I can change things like, again, the roughness, amplitude to control the strength, and the scale to get whatever look that I want. So for certain layers, this independent face control is disabled. This is for particularly thin layers that I really just want to be same thickness all the way across the layer. And so I want both top and bottom interfaces to track with each other. But then for more thicker layers, for example, the dermis layer, I have independent face control enabled by default. So coming out to geometry nodes, Let's come back to all of the additional things that you can apply to this model. So again, we have the hair, fat cells, sweat glands, veins, and arteries, and they all generally have the same format in this modifier structure. 
they have a tick box at their top, which allows them to be toggled on and off. By default, I've only got the hair enabled, but you can enable the fat cells like so, and the sweat glands, and also the veins and arteries. For each of these additional items, the settings below the enabling tick box are fairly self-explanatory. You have an object input and a material input. Then factors such as the density, seed are both just parameters to control how these objects are distributed, and these are common across all of these additional items. For some of them, such as the hair and the sweat glands, and also the veins and arteries, you'll have an offset value. And this offset is just simply a Z offset, so you can have more control over their positioning within the layers. In the sweat glands option, there is an additional parameter called cull factor. This is just an additional toggling handle to be able to control the density of sweat glands that are distributed around the sides. Finally, we have the options for veins and arteries at the bottom. This allows you to generate a layer of these blood vessels that sort of wrap around and track with the dermis layer. So if I just make the dermis layer thicker, for example, you'll see that these blood vessels sort of vaguely track with it. However, uh, if, if you want additional control over how it looks and where it's positioned, again, this offset value allows you to shift it up and down in the Z direction. Same applies for the density and seed. In this instance, the density controls the number of interconnects between the upper and lower network of vessels, like so. The resolution control below controls the number of points along the length of each vein and artery segment. So if I drop this all the way down, you'll see that they start to get more angular with longer straight connections. Whereas if I increase this all the way up, you'll get smoother chains with smoother wiggles. The higher the value, the smoother the bends along the blood vessels. But again, don't go too crazy with this value as you will again incur a lot of geometry. Finally, the artery radius and vein radius just simply control how thick these blood vessels look. Last but not least, let's just quickly have a look at the individual elements, creating the hair, sweat glands, and fat cells. If I open up the distribute objects collection, the fat cells are just simply created of from icospheres, and you can see them distributed here along the fat layer. And so the radius and subdivisions just correspond to the basic controls for an icosphere, together with the shade smooth option. The option for the hair just has a control for the end radius, and this controls how thick the hair is at the root and so if i increase this you can see that i get a fatter cross section at the root there is a default variation in radius along the length of this betty curve used to create the hair and if you wanted to get something more complicated you just need to come to the geometry nodes for the hair and come find the float curve option this will allow you to change how that radius tapers along the length of the bezier Finally, for the sweat gland, you have a bunch of parameters here, and all of these are just used to change how the, uh, the coiling behavior happens at the root of the gland. Increase the count, which changes the resolution of the bunching. The radius obviously changes the radius or the thickness of the gland. Scale allows you to change the scale of wiggling, and amplitude allow you to control this further. And of course, just to mention, the materials for all of these layers are held in the material properties tab, like so and you can come and control all of these later if you wish. And with that, that's basically everything I got on how to get started on using this model. Of course, the intention for this was to be used for educational and or general illustration purposes, so it's not necessarily scientifically accurate per se, straight out of the box. Um, but anyway, I'd love to hear how you end up using it, if you do. As always, please leave a like and a comment if you found this video useful. Subscribe for more tutorials like this, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.